Happy Monday, everybody. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm your tech guy. Today, virtualization, how to run Windows on a Macintosh. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Now, you're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit. Hello, everybody. How are you today? Leo Laporte here. Got a great question from Morocco. My name is Otmane. I've been studying networking in a school for two years, and now I'm going to study in a new school, computer engineering and networks. I want to trade in my HP laptop for a MacBook Pro, but I still have to run some Windows software. I want to know if MacBooks are good in virtualization so I can do system administration and run three or more operating systems simultaneously. A great question, Otmani. Congratulations on uh, your new school and your, uh, I guess it's, yeah, your new school and your new uh, laptop all together at once. This is actually a question uh, that has gotten a little bit more complicated because, as you know, Apple is leaving Intel behind and moving to uh, laptops where they make their own chips. Intel Macintosh computers are really almost indistinguishable from Windows computers. In fact, I remember Walt Mossberg in the Wall Street Journal reviewing a Mac saying, this is the best Windows computer you can buy. And Apple really facilitated that for a long time by offering the ability to actually install Windows on the Macintosh's hard drive and booting right into Windows. Uh, that really turned it into a Windows machine. And it really meant that if you bought a Mac, you could have it both ways. You could have Windows and you could have Mac. And frankly, you could even have Linux running on a Macintosh. You could have a triple boot system. As far as we know, and Apple hasn't been completely clear on this, this system for booting Windows will not be available on the next generation Macintoshes, the Apple Silicon Macintoshes. But just like Intel, Apple Silicon is going to be optimized for virtualization. So it will run other operating systems under a virtual machine. There, there are three very commonly used virtual machines on the Macintosh platform. I'll show you all three, and then I'll make a recommendation. Oracle makes a free one called VirtualBox. Uh, absolutely free. Um, I don't know if it's open source, but it is something that will run on a Macintosh it will run on Linux, it will run on Windows, and it will run almost any other operating system. Because uh, it's free, it's probably not as feature-rich or as fast as the commercial products, but boy, the price is right. What I can't tell you at this point, though, is if VirtualBox will be available, at least initially, on Apple Silicon. I think in time it will be, but the, the Oracle has made no promise as far as I know, about making VirtualBox work on uh, the uh, Apple Silicon. It might be that if you're going to buy a Mac, if you if you hurry and buy the Intel Mac, this might be a reason to buy an Intel Mac, frankly, because you know you can use VirtualBox, and you can also use Apple's boot camp solution to run uh, Windows natively on the Intel Macs. But if you're one of the latest and greatest and you want to you know, buy a Mac that has uh, staying power, and, and is running Apple Silicon. There are two good choices uh, that have been around for a long time. You can see this is VMware Fusion's 12th version. It's been around for at least that many years. VMware Fusion is from probably the best-known company in virtualization, VMware. And they have promised that there will be Apple Silicon versions of VMware available uh, when Apple ships its new laptops. This does a great job, has a lot of nice features. It is not inexpensive. You're probably going to, there are a variety of different price points. You're probably going to want to get the $199 VMware Fusion Pro. For $149, uh, you can get the player, which is probably all you uh, really need. I should point out that both, that the commercial companies update pretty much yearly and require you to buy an upgrade. 
So these can get pretty expensive over time. On the other hand, having one of these virtualization tools, I'll show you one more, uh, might make your life a lot easier. VMware is so well known. If you're running VMware, there are a lot of uh, VMware uh, images that you can download, which makes it very easy to quickly install a whole variety of operating systems on your Macintosh. The other competitor which I think was the first virtualization to run on a Mac. You see, they're in version 16. They've been around for an awful long time, is Parallels. And if price is an object and, you, and you're not going to use the free virtual box, this one is probably the most affordable. It's only $79.99 for a new license, uh, $50 for the yearly upgrade. You don't have to buy the upgrade, but... Most of the time, you'll want the new features. One of the nice things about both, about both VMware, and by the way, I've used VMware Fusion and Parallels. They're very close to interchangeable. When one comes up with a new feature, the other one copies it. For instance, uh, there was a feature, I think it was Parallels created at first called Coherence. I loved this idea where you can, without running the whole virtual machine, just run a Windows app inside a Macintosh. It looks like it's a Mac app. It's just got its own window. Uh, that is a nice feature. Both of these offer that. So uh, they have different names for it, but both of them have that ability to run an app kind of standalone in a window. I like that. Uh, there's a third, I'm sorry, I guess fourth choice now that you should probably think about, which is not virtualization, but containerization. And the best known container technology is something called Docker. And Docker runs quite well on a Mac. I have every expectation that Docker will run even better in uh, Apple Silicon. And it's a little lighter weight than virtualization. Uh, probably wouldn't be how you would want to run, for instance, a Windows server. You do that in VMware or Parallels. But there are operating systems you can run and, and, and application environments you can run in a container. They're a little more lightweight than virtualization. Virtualization, in effect, is an entire computer running out of a single file on your Macintosh. So it's got the Windows operating system. It's got everything Windows would have. It has a, a, you know, a, a big file that you can actually clone or duplicate, which makes it really easy. You never have to reinstall Windows. I should point out, you'll have to buy a Windows license for all of these. But if you don't mind using the demo versions, and I guess for school, probably the Windows server and the Windows clients, you know, the 90-day the demo will be fine. Those, those can be easily duplicated with snapshots. It's really convenient. Uh, Docker is a little bit more lightweight. It actually, most of the services are provided by the Macintosh operating system. But it, it's a way of taking a, a bunch of different applications, maybe with an operating system, often uh, Alpine Linux, and bundling that in such a way that it's light, uh, fast to load, and runs uh, nicely on the Mac. You'll probably use both container technologies and virtualization in your classes, I would expect. If you're going to run Windows servers, you're probably going to want to run VMware. Um, if price is uh, an issue with VMware, because it is expensive, Parallels will do okay, and uh, even VirtualBox will do okay. But VMware, because they are the kind of the king of the hill when it comes to virtualization, not just on Mac, but on every other operating system, they're almost certain to run well with a Windows server on Apple Silicon. So there's a few choices for you. I'm, congratulations on uh, your new school, on your computer engineering and network studies. Uh, yeah, that's one of the things that comes up. I should mention we have a sponsor, IT Pro TV, and they have the virtual labs that let you run your Windows servers and Windows desktops in an HTML5 browser. That's even, you know, in some ways even better. You're running it through a virtualization that's running on their servers. Uh, and I think this is the future, by the way, of running all versions of Windows. You're running it on a kind of a, a thin client on your Macintosh. That's actually a very clever way of doing it. And the other advantage of that is if you screw it up, you just close the browser <laughs> or re-log in and you start with a fresh uh, unit. So you might want to investigate. Your school might even offer this, the idea of uh, doing um, uh, kind of simulating, in effect, uh, Windows Server running it on uh, their cloud and letting you access it through your Macintosh. Uh, good luck, Otmani. It's really nice to know you listen in Morocco. Thanks for the question. I appreciate it. Our show today brought to you by our good friends at LastPass. You know I'm a big fan. LastPass can really help you manage the identities of your users, promote good security behaviors, 
especially important now while your employees are remote. You know, you want your employees to have secure password storage. LastPass gives them their own vault for storing every login, app, or web that they use. That way, they always have their passwords with them. They can gain access from anywhere, from any device. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. And that's Ask the Tech Guy for this Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. Looking forward to a fun week. And we'll see you back here next Monday. If you've got a question, just email me, asktetechguy at twit.tv. I'm your tech guy, Leo Laporte. Have a great week. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email asktetechguy at twit.tv.